Today we will be covering every single card in Dune Imperium Uprising, and I'll be giving each card a grade. I have played a decent number of games now, so my familiarity with the cards is going to be pretty solid, and I think it'll be fun to see how right or wrong I am in a couple of months once the meta has a chance to really develop. Okay, so we're going to work our way from least expensive to most expensive, so we're starting out with the one costers here, and this one's Sardaukar Soldier. It is an Emperor card. Only has access to blue spaces. It reveals for one persuasion and one dagger. And when it's trashed, it gets you an entry card. A lot of these one cost cards aren't going to be very good. They are one cost. They're cheap. So it's not the biggest deal. I will say a nice thing about this. It has an emperor tag. And there are some cards in the game that interact with emperor tags. So it has that going for it. But otherwise, not a very strong card, obviously. If you're going to pick up a card with the sole intention of trashing it later, you're going to want a better effect out of it. In Dune Imperium, there was a card that gave you four Solari when you trashed it, and that felt like a much better deal because it got you on your way to High Council or Swordmaster. I think just getting the one entry card isn't going to be worth it most of the time. And with that said, it's not an entirely useless card, but I am going to give it a D. Okay, next up we have Space Time Folding, another one coster. It is a Space and Guild card. It has access to the guild, so pretty good access. And when you play it, you can discard a card to draw a card. And if you discard a Space and Guild card, you draw an extra card. And it reveals for one Persuasion. I actually think this is the best one cost card in the game. Being a Space and Guild card is good. There are a lot of mechanics like this where if you discard a Space and Guild card, you get to draw extra cards. And this does fulfill that. Getting more faction access into your deck is generally a really good thing because it is a little bit harder in this game to get your friendships with everybody. So, so it will make it a little bit easier to get your friendship with the guild. In general, I value faction access a little bit higher in Dune Imperium Uprising than I did in the previous ones just because it is so hard to get those friendships now. And it has the bonus effect of even if you're not discarding a Space and Guild card, getting to cycle out one of your bad cards for a good card is just a good effect in general. So for the price, I'm going to give this card a B. It's pretty solid. Next up, we have Unswerving Loyalty, another one-cost card. It is a Fremen-allied card. It has no agent access. It has no agent ability, but it reveals for one persuasion, one troop, and if you have Fremen Bond, you can deploy or retreat one troop from the combat. I don't think this one's that good. It can be good if you have a lot of Fremen Bond synergies going and you really just need the Fremen tag. And the troop isn't nothing. It is a lot harder in Uprising to get passive troops, which is why in general in Uprising, you have to be a little bit more passive with combats, only limping in one or two, because if you're diving in over and over again, you're going to find that your garrison is running out quickly and you have no troops for the later round combats. So I do think getting the troop isn't nothing, but overall, I don't think it's that great of a card. I'll give this card a D. Next up, we have another one coster, Smuggler's Harvester, Space and Guild card. It has only access to the orange spaces, and if you sent your agent to a maker board spaces turn, you get a spice, and it reveals for one persuasion. When I first saw this card, I thought, oh wow, this card is pretty trash, but it's actually not that bad. Space and Guild tags in this game are pretty good, just because there's a lot of Space and Guild interaction with discarding and drawing more cards and stuff like that, so immediately that's a plus. And this one extra spice, it can add up pretty quickly. I have noticed that's a little bit harder to pick up spice throughout the game, mainly because as people get worm access, they are going to be spamming the Haga Basin over and over again. Deep Desert will start to get hit more and more, so you're going to have less bonus spice overall throughout the game. And since there's less spice overall, the Imperial Basin becomes a much more attractive spot, so people are going to be hitting that too. So I've found that there's a lot less bonus spice throughout the game. Thus, there's a lot less spice overall in the game. Additionally, the card is going to help out with the harvest uh, contracts, where you have to harvest four spice to get four salari, or you have to harvest three spice to get three salari. These become harder and harder to complete throughout the game because, like I said, you're going to have less bonus spice. This one bonus spice counts towards that contract, so it also makes completing those contracts a little bit easier. With all that said, I still don't think it's a great card. Only having access to orange is never ideal, but I'll give it a C. Okay, next up, we have Weirding Woman, another one calls card. Bene Gesserit this time has access to blue and orange, and if you have another Bene Gesserit card in play, return this card from play to your hand. It reveals for one persuasion, one dagger. I think this might be the worst card in the game. We'll have to go through the rest of the cards, but this card sucks. I don't think the Bene Gesserit tag is as strong in this game as it was in the old games. You're not getting as strong Bene Gesserit synergies between cards. That, and even if you can get it off, being able to put this back into your hand to what, play again, I guess you get one persuasion, one sword. It's just not that good. I find that when this card shows up in the row, it's usually going unpurchased the entire game. So I'm going to give this the first F of the video. Okay, we're starting to work our ways in the twos now. And this one's undercover asset is Emperor and Space and Gold. So really nice for uh, getting synergies off. It has access to green, blue, and orange. So really good agent access. The best thing about this card is going to be its agent ability. Ignore influence requirements on board spaces when sending an agent this turn. Uh, it also reveals for two daggers or a spy, which is really flexible as well. Of course, it's not going to help with getting those Spiceman's Flow points, but I think getting these two daggers is going to be more helpful than you think over the long term. That and any kind of source of spies is going to be strong in general. But yeah, let's talk about this agent ability. I'd say the strongest use of this agent ability is going to be going to Siege Tabor. As you can see, it requires two influence with the Fremen. And a lot of the early game can revolve around people hitting Desert Tactics and Frem Kit to try and get that to influence so they can go to Siege Tabor to get the Worm Hooks so that they can go to Haga Basin. 
and start trickling worms into the combats to start getting those double rewards. When you can get this pattern online of sending in one worm, sending in a couple of troops, it oftentimes become a pattern that you can just keep doing over and over again, especially when you consider a lot of the combats end up giving you water back. So if you limp a worm into this combat, even if you get third place, you're getting two water back. So it already pays for the Haga Basin and you're getting more troops. You're potentially getting spice and trashes. God forbid you get second place with a worm in this one. You're getting four troops, two water, four Solari. The strategy of getting early worms, sending in worms over and over again is so incredibly strong and this bot gives you a water which makes it even better for you if you're able to pick up undercover asset early and get those worm hooks online i think this already pays for itself i find that the shipping spot isn't as good but it can be good in a pinch if you need that extra solari to get a sword master or a high council seat and then it also of course gives you access to imperial privilege which can be really nice in the late game if you get a bad draw and you need to cycle something out if you have a useless entry card i'd say this is a pretty good card overall and i'll give it an a and keep in mind that all of these gradings are relative to their cost. So obviously relative to a seven or an eight cost card, this is not going to be an A just in and of itself. But given its cheapness, I think it's an A in that regard. Just keep that in mind for the rest of the video. Okay, next up we have Desert Survival, another two cost card. It is a Fremen card. It only has access to the desert, but it has a trash symbol, which I think is gonna be pretty solid. Uh, it also reveals for one Persuasion, one Dagger, which I think a lot of the Fremen cards do reveal for daggers, which is kind of thematic when you think about the Fremen being more of a warrior, kind of desert fighting faction. But I think the trash ability of this makes it not so bad. In this game, I think deck building is a lot stronger in that if you can get a couple of strong cards, start trashing down your deck and just being able to play those power cards over and over again, that can be a win condition in and of itself, especially if you have victory point generators. In this case, I'd be more likely to go for Desert Survival in the row if I already had a strong card or two and I was looking to thin out my deck. I think in and of itself, it's not that great. This card's okay. I think it's a little bit more situational if you need those trashes, so I will give it a C. Next up, Wheels Within Wheels. Two cost, Emperor and Spacing Guild. It has Spy Access, which we haven't really gotten to this yet, but I think Spy Access is very good in this game. If you have two influence with the Emperor, you get two Slari. If you have two influence with the Guild, you get one Spice, and it reveals for one Persuasion and one uh, Spy. I actually think this is a pretty good card. Being able to send an agent to a spot where you have a Spy can make this into a Faction Access card a lot of the time, and will incentivize you to want to put down your Spies on these different Faction Access spots. I don't know how often you're getting off these rewards, but if you get this card later in the game, it can be pretty easy to get this passive income. And like I said, it is a little bit harder in this game to get Spice, so this card will help you do that. Additionally, being Emperor and Space and Guild, I already talked about, these are two really good um, allegiances to have. I think Space and Guild even more so. So that makes it good, even if you're just discarding this card. And then revealing for a Spy is never going to feel too bad. It enables itself to go wherever you reveal the Spy. And having Spies on the board just enables flexibility as you go on. It can help you draw more cards if you end up getting really bad draws in the end game, And it can enable you to infiltrate spots that you wouldn't be able to go to otherwise. Late in the game, for example, when you know you're going to want to be hitting Highliner, if you have your Spy here... Cards like this just end up being more Highliner access. But yeah, I think this card can be really solid. I think I'll give it a B. Okay, next up we have Maker Keeper, a two-cost card. Has Ben and Chester and Fremen. And in general, the more of these alliances these cards have, they're going to be stronger. It only has access to blue, which is a little unfortunate, but the blue spots are pretty solid in this game. Eric Keen is never going to be bad if you need to cycle out cards, get troops. Siege to Boar is always going to be solid if you have access to it. And then you will want to go Research Station later in the game if you're trying to hit a Spice with Slow, stuff like that. So I don't think only having blue access is terrible. I think the rewards you get for the influence are extremely strong. The spice is great, like I already talked about, but getting the water is huge. Water is so valuable in this game. I'm going to rank cards that give you water higher than I normally would. Just because like I talked about, water is a really strong way to get a lot of combat power. When you consider that you can get worms in to double combat rewards, these worms also have three strength. And additionally, Research Station is the strongest combat spot on the board outside of Highliner and that it lets you get two troops in. So as you get more and more water in the game, you're hitting Haga Basin, you're hitting Research Station, you become a really big combat threat. So in that way, I think Maker Keeper is actually a really solid card. I'm going to give it a B. Okay, next up we have Spy Network. Another two-cost card. Has Emperor and Space and Guild Allegiance. When you buy it, you get a Spy. And I imagine that'll be the reason most people buy this card, is just so you can get the Spy right away. It can help you lock down some of the more critical Spy locations, like Highliner, like Haga Basin, so you can get a worm in the late game. Like the Bene Gesserit, so when you go to Espionage, you can pull back the Spy, get double card draws. So I think a lot of the value of this card is going to be tied up in the ability to give you a Spy. It's also not bad in that it does have Emperor and Space and Guild. So if you have cards that synergize with this, you're going to be more incentivized. And it reveals for two Persuasion and a Dagger. So even if you're just revealing this, it's still helping you get better cards, getting Spice with Flows. So I don't hate buying this at all. And lastly, if you have two or more spies on the board, you can pull one of those spies back to get an entry card. Later in the game, when you really don't need some of these spies, or if you just have a lot of spy generation in general, I think this can be a really good ability to just get passive uh, entry cards going. 
So I think this is a pretty situational card, but I think it's solid overall. I will give it a B. Next up, we have Reliable Informant, another two cost card, has space and go to Legions. It does go to the guild, which I already talked about. I'm gonna value cards that have faction access pretty high just because you wanna be getting those friendships. And when you play it, you get to put a spy on an Emperor spot, Bene Gesture spot, or Fremen spot. And lastly, reels for one Persuasion, one Solari. I actually think this is a really solid card. The guild spot in this game is just so strong. Deliver supplies, giving you water. Water is incredibly good for picking up spice, getting worms, hitting research stations. I've already talked about how good water is in this game. So being able to go here just makes it good. And then in the late game, when you want to be winning these giant multiple point combats, being able to have access to Highliner in your deck is going to be incredibly strong. So even though it's pretty cheap, I am going to value this card pretty highly. And I am going to give it an A ranking. Although keep in mind, remember, this is relative to the cost. Okay, next up we have Imperial Spymaster, two cost card, Emperor Allegiance, can go to the Emperor spots or the Spy spots. So the access is really good for this one. If you recall to Spy, you get an entry card and it reveals for one Persuasion, one Dagger. I think this is a pretty good card. Spy access is gonna be good in this game just because it's so flexible in where it allows you to go. And in case you don't have any Spies down, it can also just go to the Emperor spot. I will say in general, I don't think the Emperor spots are as strong as the other spots. Dutiful service to get a contract can be kind of a dead action in the late game. And then Sardaukar, while it does give you some troops to put in your garrison, you can't actually deploy those troops with this card. So I think the overall axe of this is not as good as some of the other cards we've seen. But having Spy access in general, I think it's still pretty strong. I'm going to have to give this card a C, though. I don't think it's that great. Next up, we have Hidden Missive, another two Persuasion card. It is a Bene Gesserit card. Only has access to green. But if you have two influence with the Bene Gesserit, it gives you a troop and a card draw. And it reveals for one Persuasion and one Dagger. I don't think this card's that great. I think the reward is pretty solid if you have the two influence, but even if you have it, I still don't love the card that much because the green spots, I'm just not in love with. Sure, you can send it to gather support, get an additional troop, so you can refill your garrison pretty quickly here. You can also send it to an assembly hall. I find that these spots you're not gonna be going to as often, so it does kind of reduce the effectiveness. So most of the time when you're playing, you're gonna be going here. And I feel like these spots just aren't impactful enough to build a card around. It's just a pretty inflexible card in that it can only go to green. And if you're revealing it, it only, goes, it only gives you one persuasion, one dagger. I don't think it's very good. I'm going to give this a D. Next up, we have Fidek and Stiltent. Two Persuasion card. Fremen Allegiance. Only goes to R and Spot. And if you say an agent to a maker board space's turn, you do give a troop, which is not bad at all. And it reveals for a water. I think a lot of the power of this card is going to lie in the fact that it reveals for a water. Like I said, water is extremely good in this game. So any source of water you can get is going to be powerful. Especially if you have a leader like Reverend Mother Jessica, where you can spend that water to get additional benefits. I think this card is going to be solid just because of this water. I actually don't think the agent ability is bad either. Being able to get extra troops like I talked about, troops are harder to come by. So spending it. But I think you're going to want to reveal this most of the time. So I will give this card a B. Next up, we're into the three cost cards and we have Rebel Supplier, another Fremen card, only blue access, which is a little unfortunate. But if you recall to spy this turn, you get two troops and it reveals for one spice, one dagger. So I think this is going to be a very situational card. If the situation lines up correctly, I think it can be a solid card for you. And that situation being you have a consistent way to get spies down on blue spots. But if you don't have this, this card is going to sit in the row. No one's going to touch it. And of course, this card is going to shine when you have a leader like Lady Margot Fenring, where every time you play the Signet Ring, you get to put a spy on a blue spot. So effectively, you are getting a passive two troops over and over again. So you become a combat force if you can pick up Rebel Supplier as well. And the nice thing is, a lot of the other leaders don't get as big of a benefit out of Rebel Supplier as Lady Margot Fenring does. So if you pick her and this uh, card's in the row, you're not going to get a lot of competition for it. I think overall, I am going to give this card a C. It can be good if the situation lines up, but most of the time it's not going to get purchased. But if you have a way to get spies down, it can be a really strong combat card. Next up, Bene Gesserit Operative, a three cost card. Bene Gesserit has Bene Gesserit access, which is really good. It gives you a spy when you put it down. And on reveal, if you have two or more spies on the board, it reveals for an additional two persuasion. So a total of three. This card is incredibly good. I feel like this card's bought every time it pops up in the row. First of all, if you send it to Espionage, you're getting a card draw and you're getting an additional spy. So just with one action, you're getting two spies down. You're already meeting the requirement for this. So even if you decide to reveal this card every single round for the rest of the game, a card that reveals for three persuasion is so incredibly good for picking up some of the stronger cards in this game. And it can enable you to get spice with flows in the late game. So not only does it give you the Bene Gesserit access to get friendships, but it also helps you do so many other things that I think this card's incredibly strong. I feel like it's snapped up pretty quickly out of the row when it does show up. The fact that it only costs three is also really good. So I'm gonna give this card an A. Next up, another three coster. We have Calculus of Power, an Emperor card, has access to blue 
and spy symbol. It trashes a card when you play. It reveals for two persuasion. And if you trash another emperor card you have in play, you get three daggers. I think this card is incredibly good. I already talked about how spy access is really good. And if you don't have any spies down, it can just go to a blue spot. The blue spots also being pretty solid in this game. The fact that it lets you trash is so good. I already talked about how deck building is such a good thing in this game. If you get some power cards and you can start playing calculus of power to start trashing some cards out of your deck, thinning your deck down, getting these power cards over and over again, you can really start steamrolling the game. So I think even with just the top part of this card, it's already a good card. But then on only a three cost card, they decide to give it two persuasion so you can still reveal it and get really good effects out of it. And if you trash another emperor card you have in play, you get three daggers. And we've already seen a lot of cheap cards that have the Emperor Allegiance. So it's not uncommon to get this effect when you're going in for a big combat. So this card does multiple things. It lets you thin out your deck. It can reveal to get you more strong cards and it can give you daggers for big combats. This card is incredibly good. I am going to give it an A. This is another card that I'm buying when it shows up in the row most of the time, just because it's so incredibly flexible. Okay, next up we have Dangerous Rhetoric, another three cost card. It has access to green and spy spot, so not bad access. So when you play this card, you can trash this card to get a bump anywhere. It reveals for one persuasion and one dagger. This card has no business being this good. This card is basically a better version of power play from the old game, because if you have a spy on a faction spot, let's say you have a spy on the Fremen, for example, you can send this card to a Fremen spot with the spy. You don't even have to use the trash ability if you won't, don't want to. So you can save this for more Fremen access in the future. But if you want to double bump there, you trash this card. You already got one influence for sending the agent there. So now you can take another bump here or you can take the bump anywhere you want. This card is so incredibly good. It can enable you to steal alliances. It can enable you to get friendships. Just a single play of this card gets you two persuasion, which is a victory point. I'm very surprised that this card was balanced at being a three persuasion cost, but I'm going to have to give this rating like an A plus slash S minus just because it's so good for getting you victory points. Unfortunately, it doesn't build up your deck over time. It's kind of a one and done kind of thing. So from that standpoint, it's not going to enable you to snowball like some of the other cards in this game can. So I can't quite give it that S rating, but it's definitely a very high A tier card. Next up, we have Double Agent, three persuasion cost card, has access to the Emperor and Space and Guild. Pretty good access, green, blue, orange. Reveals for one persuasion and one dagger. And it gets the award for the most confusingly phrased card in the game. Every time someone new to the game plays this card, they have no idea what the ability does. It has the spy symbol and then says, spying on the board space you set an agent to this turn, which just made me a little bit more confused, even though I know what this card does. And then you may place this spy on the same observation post as another player's spy. So basically what this card actually does is, if you play this card, Whatever spot you end up going to, you can put a spy on that spot. So if you send next card to the Imperial Basin, you can put a spy here. And you can do it even if someone else already has a spy there. I think this card is a little situational. I do think it being Emperor and Spacing Guild gives it a little bit more value. But overall, the access is just okay. I think the ability is just okay as well. I'm not like blown away by this. The value of having spies on green, blue, and orange is a little bit more limited when you compare it to having spies on the faction spots. So I think this card is okay, not great. I'm going to give it a C. Next up, we have Northern Watermaster, three persuasion cost card, is a Fremen card, only can go to blue spots, but it does give you a water on play. And if you reveal it, you get one persuasion. If you have more Fremen cards, you can get two spice. Most of this time, you're buying this card to play it so that you can get extra water going. And cards that give you water in this game are incredibly good for combat strategies. Whenever I see a card like this, I'm thinking combat, 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 but it doesn't just have to be combat either. Of course, you can send this to the research station to get two card draws to enable you to get that spice must flow as well. I do think this is a very good card. The only downside is it doesn't reveal for water, so it does force you to play it if you want to get this reward. I think the ones that reveal for water are a little bit more flexible in that way. Because sometimes you're not going to want to go to a blue spot to get the water. You're just not. You're going to want to be hitting the faction spots when you can. You're going to want to be sending in worms when you can. So I think the access does hurt this card a little bit. But getting the water is still really good. I'm going to give this card a B. Next up, we have Thumper. Three cost card. Fremen Allegiance. Has orange access. It allows you to double the bonus spice you harvest with this agent. It reveals for one persuasion and one spice. I think this card's pretty bad. People are hitting the spice collection spots a lot more in this game. So there's a, usually a lot less bonus spice in general. Sure, if you get a specific game going where people are more incentivized to be hitting the faction tracks or something, you can get a little bit of bonus value. But I'd say a lot of the time, the bonus spice you're getting out of this is just gonna be one spice, maybe two. And the inflexibility of only having orange is gonna hurt you in the long term, I think. It's not a totally useless card. It can get something done, but I'm like almost never buying this. I'm gonna give this a D. Next up, Ecological Testing Station, three persuasion cost card, Fremen Allegiance, has access to the Fremen, which is a really good uh, 
place to be able to go, as well as blue. You can spend two water to draw two cards. So this effectively has the uh, research station ability baked into the text of the card. And if you're real, you get one persuasion. And if you have another Fremen card, you get one water. I've been back and forth on this card. I think some people value this card pretty highly. I am not one of those people. I think the fact that it has Fremen access is a good positive aspect of this card. I think paying the two water to draw two cards, you're never gonna feel great about because in doing so, you are giving up the two troops of research station. And I already talked about how it's harder to come by troops in this game. You're really gonna wanna get those two troops. So in that way, it feels a little bit bad. Additionally, in this game, the uh, Fremen spot doesn't give water like it did in the old one. You get a card draw or you can uh, trash a card and gain a troop. So the only way you're getting water and playing this card is if you're sending it exactly to Siege Tabor. You're gonna be wanting this water to go to research station, to go to the spice spots to get worms in, stuff like that, which makes the agent ability not very good. Additionally, it only reveals for one persuasion and you have to have Fremen Bond to get the water. We've already looked at a lot of Fremen cards. A lot of Fremen cards only have access to blue and orange, which isn't great access. So you don't want to be buying a ton of them because the more you dilute your deck down with cards that don't have faction access, it's just going to be harder and harder to get your friendship points. So I think getting the Fremen Bond online is going to be kind of tough unless you have a pretty strong Fremen deck going already and you have enough faction access built in. I'm going to be avoiding this card most of the time. I don't think it's totally useless. I think the fact that it has Fremen access alone is solid, but... I'm going to give this card a C. Next up, Guild Envoy. Three cost card, space and guild card. It has access to all of the faction spots, which is incredibly strong. We already talked about how you want to be getting faction access into your deck. So this card is flexible in and of just having these. Additionally, you do have to discard a card when you play that. This is not optional. So keep that in mind when you buy this. But if you discard a space and guild card, you get to draw two more cards, which is a really, really strong ability. And it reveals for one persuasion. Like I already talked about, faction access is great. And... We've already seen a lot of Space and Gold cards, which are pretty solid. We're actually going to cover more really solid Space and Gold cards in the future as well. So it's not uncommon to be able to discard a Space and Gold card and get these extra card draws. And additionally, one of the changes in this game is that the Spice Must Flow card is a Space and Gold card. So if you're getting Spice Must Flows and they're starting to clog up your deck a little bit, this card can enable you to discard them to draw two more cards. So I think this card is incredibly good. I'm going to give it an A. I am buying this card most of the time it shows up. Okay, next up we have Branching Path, another three coster. A lot of three costers in this game. It's called Branching Path, a Bene Gesserit card. It has access to the Bene Gesserit and blue. So the fact that it has a little bit of faction access is gonna be a stronger aspect of this card. And if you have the Bene Gesserit Alliance, you can get rid of one of your entry cards to get a new entry card and gain two spice, which doesn't seem that great at the surface, but it actually is a pretty good effect. And it reveals for two persuasion. So I think baseline this card is good because it is pretty cheap and it gives you access to the Bene Gesserit. And the Bene Gesserit are a pretty solid um, faction to get access to in this game. Espionage can help you draw more cards and get spies down and secrets can just give you intrigues. And usually there's not a ton of competition for this alliance. So if you're going here often enough, you can end up getting an alliance out of it. Additionally, if you manage to get your spy down on espionage, you can do the double card draw thing, get spice with flows, get better cards. So, and uh, cycling out your entry cards can be a pretty big deal in this game. There are a lot of entry cards that either aren't that good in this game or are very situational to where you're not going to get any value out of it anyway. So being able to trade out those entry cards is good. And as a bonus on top, you get some spice out of it. And I already talked about it. It can be pretty hard to get spice if you're not one of the people that gets the deep desert when it has like four bonus spice on it. So having a way to get a little bit of bonus spice is going to be good value. And of course, revealing for two persuasion is going to be strong in this game just because it enables you to get those spice most flows in the late game i think overall this is a really solid card i'll give it a b and now we have the strongest three cost card i'm so incredibly surprised that this card only costs three it's called the guild spy when you buy it you get a spy it's a space and guild card it has access to spy access which is really solid when you play it, you can discard a card to draw a card and if you discarded a space and gold card you get an intrigue and we already talked about how the Spice and Slow is a Space and Gold card. There's a lot more Space and Gold cards in this game overall. So you can hit this effect pretty often. Additionally, and this is where the real overpowered insaneness of this card comes. It reveals for two Persuasion. And if you acquire the Spice Must Flow this turn, gain one influence with every faction you were spying on. Oh my god, what were they thinking? This card is so good. So when you buy it, you get a Spy. And given the ability, you're going to want to put it on one of the faction spots. I'd say generally the guild is one of the more contested ones. So maybe throwing it down there first would be good. But you could also consider throwing it down on the Bene Gesserit, the Fremen. I feel like the Emperor is usually the last one to get a spy on it. But once you get this card, your goal is to get all three of your spies down on faction spots. Get your high council so you get an extra two persuasion. And you just start buying spice must flows with this card as often as humanly possible. Because if you do it and you have three spies down on faction spots, you are getting three influence every single time you do. Three passive influence is incredibly 
really strong. This card can win you games if uncontested. If you are someone else at the table and you see someone buy this card, everyone else at, at the table needs to come together to try and occupy as many of these spots as you can to nerf the ability of this card. And the nice thing is, even if everyone comes together, blocks you on all the spy spots, so you're not getting a bunch of influence every time, it's still a nice card to play. So overall, incredibly solid card. It can win you games. Chome Directorship, for example, was an eight cost card in the last game and it gave you a bump with every single one. This card can give you three bumps and it only costs three. Oh, it's so good. If you see this card, I've seen people early reveal for it round one. I think it is that good. This is gonna be the first S tier card of the video. And yeah, watch out if someone gets this at your table. Next up, another three cost card, a Space and Guild card, Cargo Runner. Has access to green, blue, and orange. If you have two or more completed contracts, you get a card draw. If you have four or more, you get another card draw and it reveals for one persuasion. This card's okay. If you're getting this card early, generally, you're not gonna have the completed contracts. And if you're getting it late, you usually wanna be buying better cards than this because you should have more persuasion. I think this card's all right. If you can get the two card draw out of it, I think it is pretty solid. But I think it's pretty rare where you're gonna be getting it, both card draw. So a lot of the times, this is just gonna be a green, blue, orange access that gets you one card draw. So solid overall, doesn't do anything really that special. I'm gonna give it a C. And next up, we have the card that I probably hate the most out of all the cards in the game. Three cost card, it's called Covert Operation. It has spy access. And when you play it, every opponent has to discard a card. It's so annoying to play against. It's one of those cards that you have to remember your opponents have. You kind of want to remember where in their deck it is when they last played it, because if they catch you off guard with this card, it can cost you a spice plus flow point. It can cost you buying that big S tier card. It's so annoying. I hate playing against this card. When it shows up in the row, I'm just rolling my eyes. It also reveals for two spies. So if your opponent can't even play it one round, they reveal it one round, they get two spies down. They have a guaranteed way to play this card. This card drives me crazy. I do think it's a good card and I tend to buy it when it shows up. Unfortunately, it doesn't reveal for any persuasion, so it's not gonna help you with spice and slows in the late game, but I think the disruptive aspect of this card, potentially stopping your opponents from getting spice with flows, makes it pretty worthwhile. I'm gonna begrudgingly give this card an A, although I do think it's a low A. I don't think it's as strong as some of the other A cards we've seen just because it is so incredibly annoying. And the thing is, you don't even have to recall the spy when you do it. You can just send your agent there and leave the spy. This can be a very replayable card. Next up, another three coster, Mola Pistol, Fremen card. Has access to blue and orange as most Fremen cards do. When you play, you get to draw a card and it reveals for one persuasion, one dagger. This card's fine. It can enable you to cycle through your deck, which is a good ability in this game if you have some other power cards. And it has that Fremen access, which as we'll see with some of the cards later, can be really strong. The only downside is you really don't want to be picking up too much blue and orange access. Like I said, you want to keep a relatively high density of faction access in your deck so that you can pick up these friendships as you go along. I'm usually not going after this card. I don't think it's that great. I'm going to give this card a D. Okay, next up we have the Beast Spoils, a three cost card. It is an Emperor card. It only has access to blue. And it's kind of an interesting card. When you play it, if you have unmatched combat ward cards, it gives you a different ability based on which unmatch you have. So if you have an unmatched dagger, you get a trash. If you have an unmatched mouse, you get a spice. And if you have an unmatched uh, ornithopter, you get a, a troop. And it reveals for three daggers. So I think the real strength of this card is going to come with the fact that you get three daggers on reveal. We'll talk about this more as the video goes on, but getting three daggers into combat is incredibly strong. In general, because troops are a little bit harder to come by in Uprising, it's gonna raise the relative value of daggers and stuff you reveal, which can help you get more victory points and rewards from combats. It's very cheap and it gives you three daggers. I think buying this and revealing it over and over again, you're gonna get a lot of value out of this. In the rare scenario where you have a bunch of unmatched things, I think this can also be good on play. I think the green trashing a card is gonna be your strongest bet. So if you start out with an unmatched green card, I think getting this and playing that to trash some cards will be good. I think the Ornithopter is probably the second strongest one. Getting troops is pretty hard in this game like I talked about. So if you have an unmatched green and an unmatched Ornithopter, you're gonna be living uh, pretty. And then the mouse is also good. Getting a passive spice is always gonna be fine, but I think it's the weakest one of the three. But I do think it's a really strong card. It gives you a lot of combat potential for a very cheap price, so I'm gonna give this card an A. Okay, our first four calls card, Smuggler's Haven, another Space and Guild card, has access to the Space and Guild and Orange and our first victory point generator. When you play it, you can spend four spice to get a victory point, incredibly good. And when you reveal it, if you're spying on a maker board space, you get two spice. So there's a lot going on with this card and I think this card is incredibly good. So first of all, pretty cheap for what it does. It gives you access to the Space and Guild, which I already talked about are really, really strong spots in this game. So just for access alone, I'm liking this card already. Anything that gets you points in this game is gonna be incredibly valuable. And of course you can end up getting multiple points out of this, but even if you only end up getting one victory point out of this card, 
it's already doing what you want it to do. Additionally, let's say, you know, spice is kind of hard to come by. You don't think you'll be able to get there because people are taking up all the spice before you can. The fact that this reveals for two spice if you're spying on a maker board space is incredibly good. This card pays for its own victory point if you reveal it twice. Generally, the Haga Basin having a spy here is going to be really good for you anyway, so you can guaranteed get a worm in to double combat wars for the three point combats. So you get this card, you get your spy down on the Haga Basin ASAP, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. I think this is an incredibly strong card, and I think I'm going to have to give it an S. Next up, we have Southern Elders, a four cost card, Bene Gesserit and Fremen, and it has access to the Bene Gesserit and Fremen, which is really good. If you have another Bene Gesserit card in play, you get two troops. It reveals for a water, which I already talked about is a pretty good effect. And if you have a Fremen bond, you get two persuasion. So I think this is a pretty good card. And it's kind of cool in that it synergizes with both the Bene Gesserit and its agent playability and with the Fremen in its reveal. Having access to the Bene Gesserit and Fremen are really good. You do want to be sending your agents to these spots, getting your friendship points. I think the access of this card is great. I don't find myself getting off the extra troops as often with this card, I will say. Of course, the new Arrakis Liaison Prepare the Way is a Bene Gesserit card, so it can make it a little bit easier to get this online, but I don't like buying too many of these. I think having a thin deck is so good in this game, especially if you get some strong cards. So I'll usually just have one, maybe two of these in my deck. But if you can get it off, the two extra troops are incredibly valuable. And reveal, you're going to feel good about revealing this too, because revealing for water is so good. And lastly, if you have a couple of other Fremen cards in your deck, being able to get two Persuasion out of this is going to be icing on the cake. So in light of all those things, I do think this is a good card. I'm going to give it an A ranking. Next up, True Chance. Another four cost card, Bene Gesserit, has access to every single faction and reveals for one. This is pretty much just buying another diplomacy into your deck. I already talked about how good faction access is in this game so you can get those friendship points. If you are not getting your friendship points, you're just missing out on free points pretty much. So I do think this is a really strong card. I do tend to reveal for this where I can. It's not a game breaking card, right? You're not going to win the game just by having this card, but I do think it's a really solid card overall. I'd probably give it a low A, but it does still hit that A ranking for me, especially because it's only four persuasion. Okay, next up we have Public Spectacle, Four Calls card, Emperor Allegiance, has spy access, and if you recall to spy this turn, you get a bonus bump, and it reveals for one persuasion, one spy. This card is gross. This card is incredibly good. We already talked about how strong the other card was, because when you spend it, you get to um, get a bonus somewhere, making it a, a power play effectively. You can get double bumps. This card is that same ability, but it doesn't trash itself after use. So this is a card you get into your deck. You can keep playing it over and over again, get double bumps over and over. Helps you get your friendships, helps you get alliances. This card is incredibly strong, absolutely worth early revealing for if you can get into your deck quickly, especially strong if you have another access of spies as well. When I have this card, I love getting a spy on the Bene Gesserit because then you can play it there, pull back your spy and put the spy back down to get faction bumps everywhere else. This card is incredibly good. It's an S tier card. Yeah, I cannot believe the card only costs four. We're going to see a card later that does a similar thing to this, but it costs six. So I think this card is incredibly underpriced and worth revealing for a lot of the time. Next up, Sardar card coordination, another four cost card, Emperor card, goes to the Emperor spots and the green spots, and you may deploy any troops you recruit this turn to the combat, including if you go to non-combat spaces. And it reveals for two persuasion and has plus one dagger for each Emperor card you revealed, including this one. So firstly, it's going to be solid because it gives you two persuasion to buy better cards, to get spice and flows, and it can give you a couple of extra daggers as well, depending on what your deck is looking like if you have a bunch of Emperor cards. But the real strength of this card comes with this ability, which is a lot stronger than you think up front. Highliner is incredibly contested in this game because it enables you to throw a bunch of troops into a combat and potentially win a tier three combat, which if you have a worm in, can double rewards, gives you like three to four to five victory points to just win the game right there. But even if someone else goes Highliner, this turns Sardaukar into a cheaper Highliner. Of course, you get one less troop, but you're getting an entry card and you can send these four troops into the combat. That makes Sardaukar coordination incredibly flexible, especially when you consider that Sardaukar is not going to be a popular spot for everyone else as the late game continues. You want to be able to get these troops into combat. No one wants to get four troops and just leave them in the garrison. So this becomes a very flexible way to get four troops into the combat. And let's say you can't even afford Sardaukar coordination. You can send this card to gather support and send those two troops in, effectively turning gather support into a research station. Of course, you can't send troops in from your garrison, which makes it a little bit weaker, but it does give you the two troops and it can enable you to buy water as well. I already talked about how strong water is. So I think Sardaukar coordination is a very, very good card. It gives you some faction access, which we talked about, which can help you get points and it can make you a lot more threatening in combat if you have this. I'm going to give this card an A. Next up, another four coster, Shishakli. I might be pronouncing that wrong. Uh, Fremen card has access to blue and orange. If you trash a card, you draw a card. Reels for two daggers, and if you have another Fremen card, it gives you a Fremen bump. This is definitely one of the cards I slept on the most when I first started playing, just because at the surface, it doesn't seem like it's doing anything too crazy, right? The agent access isn't that great. You know, it only reveals for two daggers, no persuasion. How often are you actually getting this Fremen bond off? But 
I think this card is very good. Um, first of all, we already talked about how strong the trashing mechanic is in this game because it can thin down your deck and let you play your power cards over and over again. This card lets you trash, but it also lets you draw a card after you trash. So you can trash a card from play from your discard, something like a dagger or something that you're not really using. And then it lets you draw a card on top of that. So just playing this card to thin out your deck and draw new cards is really good. And additionally, if you have another Fretman card in your deck, revealing this for a passive bump is incredibly good. Remember in the shadows from the last game, which everyone valued super highly. And one of the main reasons they valued it so highly is because you could get passive faction bumps out of this. Of course, it's a little bit harder to get this free Fremen bump because it requires Fremen bond. But if you're playing this card and you buy like, I don't know, one, two other Fremen cards, if you're trashing your deck, you're getting rid of some of your weaker cards to pick up more of these Fremen cards it becomes much more likely to actually be able to get these Fremen Bumps. And revealing for two daggers is a lot stronger than you think. We already talked about how it's harder to get troops in this game. And if it's harder to get troops, people are going to have less overall combat power in the combats. So that raises the relative value of revealing for swords. So in general, in this game, we are going to value cards that reveal for swords stronger than we would otherwise. So I think this is a really strong card. And I'm going to give it an it. Next up, Tread in Darkness. Four Persuasion cost card. Bene Gesserit has access to green, blue, and orange. If you have another Bene Gesserit card in play, you can trash a card to draw a card, and it reveals for two Persuasion and a Dagger. I'm not going out of my way for this card. I do think it's solid. Uh, it has decent access, reveals for two Persuasion and a Dagger, which you always like to see. I don't find myself getting this off very often. I think the overall value of Bene Gesserit cards are a little bit lighter in this game. I don't tend to have as many Bene Gesserit cards in my deck as I used to. So I find I don't end up getting this ability off very often, but it is a solid card in that it reveals for a decent amount and can send you to any non-faction spot. I don't think it's crazy though. I'm going to give it a C. Next up, Paracompass. Four Persuasion cost card. Only access to blue, which is a little unfortunate, but it does give you two Solaria. And if you have a high council seat, you get two Persuasion. Plus, if you also have your sword master, you get one Persuasion. So when this card is fully turned on, it gives you three Persuasion on reveal, which we already talked about. is really strong for getting Spice from Flows and other powerful cards. The only downside is... It takes a while to get this online, right? You're usually only going to have your high council on Swordmaster towards the end of the game, unless you have a really strong source of Solari. And usually you want to get your Swordmaster before your high council. Of course, there are going to be exceptions to that. I just find this takes a while to turn on. Getting two Solari on play is very interesting. I can't even think of any other cards in the game that give you Solari on play. And really the only consistent way to get Solari on this board is going to be Spice Refinery or shipping if you have the uh, influence with the guild. So this can enable you to get your sword master pretty quickly. Because if you think about it, if you use that blue access, head on over to Spice Refinery, you're getting four or six Solari. And the high council only costs five. So with one play of that, you can you have enough Solari for high council or sword master if someone's already gotten it before you. I do think it's okay. I'm not going out of my way for this card. If it's later in the game and you already have this stuff, I think it can also be worth going for, but I don't know. I think it's good. It's not great though. I'll give it a C. Next up, Delivery Agreement. Our first five cost card we're going to go over. It is a Spacing Guild card. Only has access to blue, which is a little unfortunate. If you play it, you can discard a card to pick up a contract. When you reveal it, you can get one spice. Or if you have four or more completed contracts, you can trash it for a victory point. And at first, I'm thinking, okay, it's a victory point generator. Probably value this on the higher side. But unfortunately, I have found it's actually pretty hard to complete four or more contracts. Of course, this does give you a way to pick up contracts. But I don't know. I don't love playing this card. The reveal is also bad. It doesn't help you get more persuasion for spice flows and stuff. And it only gives you one spice. Maybe I'd value a little bit more if it gave you two spice or something like that, but it's pretty minimal. Don't get me wrong. There are a lot of good contracts in this game that are very achievable, but I find that a lot of the achievable contracts tend to go pretty early. And what can happen is some of the harder to complete contracts can pop up that no one ends up buying. Some of the Sardaukar ones can be really hard to complete, so they'll stick around for a while. Harvesting four can be deceptively difficult if everyone's acquiring all the bonus spice every round. High Council, Highliner, the Acquire Spice was slow. If a lot of these pop up in a row, it can be really challenging to get four completed contracts, especially if there's competition for them, which makes actually getting the victory point out of this a lot harder. Additionally, if you're running around trying to grab contracts to meet this condition, there's an opportunity cost to that, right? You're missing out on going to some of the stronger places that could benefit you more in the moment to try and meet this victory condition. So I think this card can be a bit of a trap sometimes, especially if you get it early, because then you start focusing too much on contracts, which generally they're going to give you a, some rewards, but it's not worthwhile nose diving onto them, right? I think this card obviously becomes a lot better if you already have a lot of completed contracts. If you already have three completed contracts, then it becomes worthwhile grabbing this for sure. It becomes a much easier victory point to get. But early in the game when you don't have many completed contracts, I am not buying this card very often. I would rather buy a cheaper card that gives me persuasion or gives me a better, gives me better access or something like than this card. It's very situational. I'm going to give it a C. Okay, our next five cost card in high places. When you buy it, you get a spy. It's Emperor and Bene Gesserit. 
and it goes to the Emperor and Bene Gesserit spots. If you have another Bene Gesserit card in play, you get to draw a card and put down a spy, and it reveals for two persuasion plus an additional three if you pull back two of your spies. So a lot to digest here. First of all, getting a spy when you buy, very good. It has really good faction access, which we talked about. You want to be getting faction access cards in your deck. I, like I've said, I don't tend to have a lot of Bene Gesserit cards in my deck, so I'm not getting these uh, Bene Gesserit synergies all very often. So I don't find myself getting this very often. The real power of this card comes from its reveal, actually. Being able to reveal for five persuasion is insane. It is so good. If you have the high council seat, that means you only need two more persuasion from hand and this thing gets you a spice with slow. This thing can get you spice with slows by itself consistently, especially if you can continue to get spies down to keep withdrawing these. I love this card. I think this card's very good. And even if you're not getting the insane five persuasion, it still gives you two and it gives you good faction access. And the fact that it gives you Ben and Jesser at faction access means you can go to espionage and get the spies down to end up revealing this card later. And let's say you randomly do have a deck with a lot of Bene Gesserit cards. It lets you put down even more spies. So if you play the Bene Gesserit card first, then you play this card to espionage, you're getting the two spies down that you need to reveal this later. So, and the value of this card just goes up if you have other sources of spies in your deck so you can continue to reveal this more and more. I love this card. I think it's really good, especially for five. I don't think it quite crosses into the S tier threshold, but it is a high A card and can generate victory points in and of itself. Next up, we have another five cost card, Leadership, a Fremen card. It gives you access to the Fremen spots and orange spots. For each sandworm you have in the conflict, you get to draw a card. And it reveals for two Persuasion plus a dagger and an additional dagger for every other revealed card you have this turn that has a dagger. So there is a lot to digest here. Um, I think the access is fine. Getting Fremen access is going to be good for you. I don't find myself actually getting the card draw very often with this. It can be good. Uh, because it has orange access, you can send this to Deep Desert or Haga Basin and immediately get that card draw. But with that said, you're only getting like one or two cards out of it, which isn't the best value. I think the real power of this card comes from the reveal. Two persuasion, first of all, which is really solid. It gives you a dagger and a surprising number of cards in this game do reveal for just a random dagger. So if you get this card early, you can build your deck in a way that a lot of your cards are gonna reveal for one dagger, which if revealed for this gives you two daggers, you can easily get four or five, six daggers out of this card if you're building your deck around it. Catches people insanely off guard, can win you late game combats. I actually think this card's pretty solid. Do I think it's as good as some of the other cards we've seen? No, uh, it doesn't do that much, but I think it's a really solid card overall, especially if you're going for a combat worm kind of strategy. So I will give this card an A. Next up, we have Captured Mentat, five cost card. It has only access to green and orange, which isn't ideal, but when you play it, you can discard a card to draw a card and get an entry card, which is pretty strong. And on reveal, it gives you one persuasion and lets you go down faction access to go up somewhere else. So there's also a lot going on with this card, but I actually think this card's very good. So first of all, the mechanic of being able to discard a card you don't want to draw a new card, strong mechanic, can bail you out of bad draws in the late game or the early game. And in addition, it gives you an extra entry card. I don't think entry cards are quite as good in this game as it was in the last game, but they still have a decent amount of value to them. So if you have a passive way of getting them, it's gonna be pretty good. Additionally, really for one persuasion, while not that great, but being able to shift your influence around is really strong. It can enable you to hit some of the stronger spots like the Fremen spots, like the guild spots, like the uh, Bene Gesserit spots or something like that, wherever you need to go and then kind of fill out the other spots you haven't been hitting as much, like the uh, Emperor. It can also give you an unexpected way to steal an alliance from somebody. Let's say you're chasing somebody else with the alliance. You reveal this card. A lot of people aren't gonna remember that you have that card. It can let you steal the alliance from somebody else. And it does become pretty hard to steal the alliance back in this game because there aren't as much faction influence bonus bumps in this game as there were in the last one. So being able to shift the faction access around is pretty solid. It's also pretty good early on in the game because people want to be going to Siege to board to get their maker hooks. So you can hit only one Fremen spot, maybe go deliver supplies or secrets for someone else, shift it into the Fremen so you can get Siege to board a little bit earlier. And usually the first person with worms is going to be doing very nicely because they can hit Aga Basin with a little bit less contention and, real, and start piling on those double combat rewards. So I think Captured Mentat's really good. I do find myself playing it more often to get the bonus card draw and the Intrigue, but I think overall it is a solid card. The, the big downside is going to be that it only has access to green and orange. I do like buying this card. I don't think it's the strongest card. I'd probably give it like a low A rating, but I still think it crosses into that A threshold. Okay, next up we have Chani, Clever Tactician. Five cost card, has access to Fremen, blue and orange. If you have three or more units in the conflict, you get an entry guard. And keep in mind that units count as troops or sandworms. And on reveal, it lets you retreat two troops to get four swords. So it basically allows you to retreat those troops, but keep the combat power, which can be really good for keeping your garrison strong. I already kind of talked about how troops are harder to come by. 
So a mechanic like this that lets you keep your strength going is going to be pretty good. And if you have other Fremen cards in there, there is a Fremen bond mechanic that will let you get two persuasion out of Tani as well. So this is a card that I actually valued much higher at the beginning and I've come down on recently. It is fairly expensive. It does have good access. Being able to go to the Fremen spots are good. And it also has a little bit of flexibility and being able to go to blue or orange. I'd say the real downside of this card is the fact that you have to have three units in the combat to get any kind of effectiveness out of the agent ability or the reveal ability. So first of all, the agent ability makes sense. You can, of course, send Chani to Desert Tactics, to Arakeen, to Siege Tabor. If you have two troops in garrison, that becomes a total of three troops into the combat. So you can get your entry card that way. Of course, you can also send in Sandworms and do the same thing. But... If you find yourself in a position where you don't have a lot of garrison troops, it can become pretty hard to get those uh, three units into the combat. Additionally, for the reveal, if someone hits Arakeen before you, if you don't have access to Siege Tabor, if you don't have the water for desert tactics, if you don't have your two troops in garrison, it can be awkward getting those three troops into the combat. If you don't want to be hitting those spots for whatever reason, it feels bad having to go to the spots to get value out of this. Because keep in mind, you can't just have two troops into the combat. If you only have two troops in and you withdraw them, you no longer have any troops in the combat, so you no longer have any combat power. So those four extra daggers do nothing for you. And that's something I had to learn the hard way, unfortunately. So in order to get any value out of this, you have to have three troops in, and it can be awkward getting those three troops in unless you go to multiple combat spaces or you go to the ones that give you bonus troops. And I find that I end up missing that value a lot of the time. Of course, a leader like Gurney Halleck that has that extra troop from their signet ring is going to have an easier time of getting the value out of this because it's so easy for them to get their three troops in. But other times, you can end up getting in awkward spots where you don't have a lot of troops in garrison and you just aren't getting this value as often as you can. If you pick up Chani, you want to have a decent garrison in place so you can get the abilities out of this, but it feels bad when you end up having to reveal her over and over again and you don't have Fremen Bond, so you're not even getting persuasion out of her. It can be, it can end up being a really crappy card if you're not planning around it carefully. So all that in mind, I think there are a lot of caveats to playing Chani well. I think she can work really great if you're getting this off frequently enough and still getting the combat value out of it, but uh, I don't know. You can also end up in situations where Chani's not that good. I'm going to give her a high B, which could be controversial, but... Yeah, I just don't think she's that great. Okay, next up, Treacherous Maneuver, five cost card. Emperor has access to all the faction spots, which is going to be good. When you play it, you can trash this card and an Emperor card from your hand to get two influence instead of one and it reveals for one persuasion and one entry card. So this card is going to be solid just because it has all the faction access. Trashing this card and an Emperor card from your hand to gain two influence can be tough to line up and it's a little bit annoying, especially considering the fact that Public Spectacle, which we saw only had only cost four, gives you those double bumps without having to meet all of these crazy conditions. So this costs more and it's harder to get that double bump. So in that way, I feel like it's not even as strong as public spectacle, but it does give you access to all the faction spots. So it does. So weirdly enough, it does kind of just end up becoming a more expensive version of truth trance with the added benefit of if the stars align, you can get that double bump later in the game for the victory point. It does reveal for an entry card, which is kind of nice, but I don't think it's as insane as it might appear on the surface. So in light of that, it, it is still good because it gives you such strong faction access. And you can sometimes double get double faction bumps out of it. You can get an entry card on reveal. It has Emperor Allegiance, which is solid. I'm going to give this card an A, but I think it's a low A. So, okay, next up, another five coster. Subversive Advisor. When you buy it, you get a spy. It has only spy access, and if you sent an agent to a faction board space this turn, gain two influence instead of one and trash this card, and it reveals for one persuasion. So the pricing of this card is very interesting to me. It just feels like a weaker version of Public Spectacle. Public Spectacle has Emperor, so it already has a tag that Submersive Advisor doesn't have. It's one cheaper. Of course, it doesn't give you the spy on buy, which is a little bit weaker, but it does reveal first buy. You can play this card again and again. This one trashes itself after one use. And the bonus influence you get from this has to be with the same one, whereas Public Spectacle, you can send that thing anywhere. So I do think Submersive Advisor is a good card. It effectively generates a point when you consider you need two influence with a faction to get the friendship point. But it's just not as good as the cheaper version of the card, which makes it feel a little bit bad. And of course, a situation can arise where everyone else has put a spy on a faction access spot. So when you buy this, you can't put the spy anywhere. So this becomes a pretty dead card for you, but it's good for everybody else. I do think it's a good card. Don't get me wrong. I just don't think it's that great. I'm going to end up giving this one a high B. Next up, Space and Guild's Favor, another five cost card. It is a Space and Guild card. Has access to the Space and Guild and Orange. And this is the first time we've seen this, but when this card is discarded, you get two spice. When you play it, you get to draw a card. And on reveal, you get two persuasion and you can spend three spice to get a faction bump anywhere. First of all, Spacing Guild. We already talked about this card is incredibly nice with the cards that make you discard Spacing Guild cards to get an additional benefit of some sort. And on top of that, when this card is discarded, you also get two spice. So this card synergizes perfectly with those discard cards. 
On top of that, I already talked about how good spacing access is in this game. It lets you get water. It lets you get Highliner access for the big combats in the end. You're usually not going to feel bad about having extra space and guild access in your deck. And it draws you a card on top of that. So it lets you get a little bit of cycling. And even if you're not playing this card, it gives you the two persuasion to get a spice from slow to get a strong card. And let's say you have a little extra spice lying around. That one extra faction bump has gotten me a point way more often than I ever would have thought. There are so many times in this game where you're just missing that one faction influence with one track to get you that friendship point and you can't quite get there before the end of the game. This is a really nice way to dump some excess space and get that bump. This card's really, really good. Even if you don't have the synergies for discarding it, I would still buy this card. I think it's an A card. Next up, Strike Fleet, another five coster. When you buy it, you get to put a spy down. It only has spy access, but if you recall to spy this turn, you get three troops into the combat, which is gross. And it reveals for one persuasion and three daggers. So this is a combat card all freaking day. It's really nice in that it gives you the spy. So you at least get one use out of this. But this this card is so good. Getting six, getting three troops, which is six combat power into a combat is just so, so strong. Look at the board. You're only getting three troops from a spot for Highliner or Sardaukar if you have that one card that lets you send them in. If you have a consistent way to get spies down, it is so hard to keep up with the troop value of getting this card played over and over again. And here's the thing. Let's say you don't even have that many spies down. Revealing this card for three daggers is so incredibly good. I already talked about how it's harder to get troops in this game. So there's less overall combat power in the combats generally. Sometimes there'll be combats that only have like four total strength going in. You can limp in one troop Reveal this card, go up, and just get a free combat victory. Strike Fleet is a very, very good card. And of course, it's going to synergize even stronger with leaders that have a consistent source of spies like Lady Margot Fenring, like Staban Tuik, and even Fader Alpha, for example. This card's incredibly good. I find it being purchased a lot of the times. I feel so torn. I actually think you can give this card an S just through its insane combat strength. Being able to consistently win combats in this game is such a strong victory condition. You know what? I don't care if it's unpopular. I'm giving this card an S. It's so good. Okay, next up, Priority Contracts, our first six cost card. It is a space and gold card, only access to orange and green. It does give you a contract when you play it. It reveals for two spice. And if you have four or more completed contracts, you can trash it, get a victory point. For the same reason as the other one, I don't rank this one super highly just because it does tend to be a trap. If you get it early, you can tend to nosedive on contracts too heavily to try to get the point out of this, which has an opportunity cost, like I said, and able to do other things. Later in the game, if you already have a couple con completed contracts, sure. And it, is, it isn't too bad in that it does reveal for two spice, so it can kind of keep your spice engine going. But overall, I'm not a huge fan of this card. I do think it can be good in the right situation, and I do think it's better than its counterpart card. So I will give this one a B, but I'm not in love with these cards, to be honest. Next up, six cost card, Stilgar the Devoted, a Fremen card, has access to Fremen, blue, and orange, gives you two troops on play, and it gives you two persuasion for each Fremen card you have in play, including this one. This card is so good. Stilgar got so much love in this one. First of all, faction access, not bad at all. Getting two troops on play can make you a very powerful combat leader. I just talked about how strong Strike Fleet is because it gives you three troops when you play it and you have to recall a spy to get this. You don't have to recall a spy to this and all of the Fremen, Blue, and Orange spots are combat spots. You can always throw these troops into combat if you want. So Stilgar enables you to go crazy on combats and additionally, if that wasn't already strong enough, they decided let's also enable you to get Spice Muff Flows in the late game with this card because revealing for two persuasion for each Fremen card you have is so, so good. There have been so many Fremen cards I've already spoken about, but... When you consider the fact that you can still play those cards and then reveal Stilgar to get two persuasion out of them, it makes it so free to get Spice and Flows as you go on. Stilgar is an incredibly strong card. It lets you do everything you want in this game. S tier card, for sure. Okay, next up, Desert Power, six cost card. It is a Fremen card. Only has X to the orange, which is a little unfortunate, but if you send an agent to a maker board space this turn, you do get two spice and it reveals for two persuasion. Or if you have maker hooks, you can spend water and water to send in a worm. This is a card I didn't value super highly at first. Because it's pretty expensive, it doesn't give you great access, and I didn't really think that the uh, ability were that strong. But, I already talked about, it is kind of hard to get spice in this game, so even if you're buying this early on, and you're just heading to the desert spots over and over again, being able to get two extra spice can really add up as the game goes on. It can enable you to hit Highliner so much easier in the late game, and even if you're not playing it, the reveal is solid. First of all, you can use it to get a spice from slow if you really need for the two persuasion, but if you have your maker hooks... Being able to spend in one water to get in a worm is a very, very underrated ability. Think about it. As the game goes on, so many people are rushing to get to the Haga Basin so they can get that one worm in so they can double their combat rewards. This spot ends up being blocked so often in this game. Desert Power effectively allows you to take the Haga Basin play without spending an agent. 
without the possibility of getting blocked. And it can surprise everyone because it happens at the very end of your reveal. I think this card's really, really good, especially if you get some of the combat leaders like Muad'Dib who benefits from having worms in combat, like Gurney Halleck, stuff like that. I think this card's very good. I don't think it's quite as broken as some of the other cards we've seen. I'm gonna give it an A, but I, I do find myself picking up this card a lot more than I used to. Next up, Junction Headquarters, six cost card, space and gold card. Only has access to green, blue, and orange. If you have the Alliance, you can trash an entry card and take two spice to get a victory point, And it reveals for one water, one troop, and one persuasion. So I actually think this is gonna end up being the weakest six cost card. I always talk about how strong it is to be able to get victory point generators in this game, but I feel like the requirements for this one are a little bit too much. First of all, it requires you to have the Space and Gold Alliance, which can be pretty difficult just because the Space and Gold spots are pretty good. So the Alliance does end up being taken by someone else more often than not. Plus having to pay an entry card is pretty brutal. When you think about it, sometimes you have a couple of entry cards you wanna hold on to and giving that up Plus two spice for a victory point. Ugh, oh, it feels real bad. I think this would have actually been a better card if it was just the entry card for the victory point. I find a lot of the times when I'm buying this one, I'm not even thinking about the agent ability most of the time and I'm just buying it so I can reveal for a water and a troop. I already talked about how revealing for water is pretty good in this game. It also gives you the troop as well. So this gives you a lot of uh, staying power when it comes to combats. But at times it does feel like a worse version of Smuggler's Haven. Of course this costs more spice, but you don't have to give up your entry card and you don't have to have the Alliance and it reveals for two spice which is a really good reveal. I think Smuggler's Haven is stronger than Junction Headquarters, even if they cost the same amount, but Junction Headquarters costs two more and it doesn't have access to the guild. With that said, it is still a decent card, but uh, I'm gonna give this one a C when you consider the price of the card. If you don't have anything better to buy and you wanna reveal it a bunch of times, be my guest. Next up, six cost card, Corinth City, an Emperor card, has access to the Emperor and the Green Spaces. When you play it, you can discard two cards and pay five Solari to get a victory point. So another victory point generator. And it reveals for five Solari or it allows you to pay five Solari to take your high council seat if you don't already have it. So I think this is a very, very good card. First of all, the access is pretty good. Green access, I'm not in love with, but it is still solid. And the nice thing is usually the green spots aren't taken. So you have a guaranteed spot to play to this to generate the victory point. If I'm not generating the victory point, I want to be revealing Corrin City because generating five Solari on reveal is insanely good. If you get this card early, you reveal it a couple of times, you're getting 10, 15 Solari. That's enough to fuel your high council seat. It's enough to fuel your sword master. And then in the late game, if you let's say you didn't even buy those, now you can start buying victory points with that Solari. This card is incredibly good. It's a victory point generator. It generates re a lot of resources for you. I think this is an S tier card for sure. And I will go out of my way to get this card if it's available. Okay, Arrakis Revolt, another six house card. It does give you one troop when you buy it. It's a Fremen card, only blue access, which feels a little bit bad. But on play, if you have maker hooks, you can pay two spice to break the wall and get a uh, worm into the combat. And it reveals for one persuasion and three daggers. So I was a little bit torn when I first saw this card, but the more I've seen it play, I actually, I do think it's a solid card. First of all, it gives you an uncontested way to get worms into the combat. You can usually get to a blue spot on this board. So you can usually play this if you need to, and it lets you get a uh, worm into the combat. Additionally, it lets you break the wall, which can be really good for sneaking worms into combat. So like this, allowing you to get potentially four water, two troops, stuff like that. I think anything that lets you sneak in worms is gonna be solid in this game. But even if you aren't playing the ability, revealing for three daggers, I already talked about, that's a pretty big deal. When someone at your table buys a card that reveals for a bunch of daggers like this, you have to remember they have it because it is going to drastically change your calculations when it comes to combat. If you're shipping into combat and it's kind of a close combat and you know someone has a card like this to reveal, it makes it so much harder to win. It is hard to get a lot of combat power into combats in Uprising. So the value of daggers like this are gonna be even bigger. I think this is a very good card. I don't think it's broken by any stretch, but I do like it a lot. And I will give this card an A. Next up. Price is no object, six house card. It gives you two Solari on buy. Emperor and a Bene Gesserit card. It can play to the Emperor Bene Gesserit spots. It reveals for two Persuasion, two Solari. And when you play it, you may acquire a card to your hand using Solari instead of Persuasion. So this is a very cool card. I love this card. I think it's a lot of fun. First of all, it has a lot of Solari generation. So it can set you up to get your Swordmaster, to get your High Council seat, stuff like that. Additionally, it has really strong access. Like we talked about, you want to be getting more faction access into your deck. And the ability to acquire a card to your hand using Solari instead of Persuasion is so, so good. First of all, it allows you to take some really surprising plays. There are a lot of strong cards in this game and being able to just nab one into your hand and potentially reveal it or play it later in that turn is so good. Additionally, let's say you don't even have a lot of Solari with this card. You can use this card 
to buy a prepare the way, for example, just so you can reveal the two persuasion to get a spice with flow. And while we're on the topic of spice with flow, let's say you're loaded with Solari in the game. You can actually use this ability to straight up buy spice with flow points, which is so, so good. I do find that that can be pretty hard to do, especially if you're getting your high council, your sword master, stuff like that. But I feel like there can be a very high ceiling with this card. I love going after it when it's available. I will say, I think the overall strength of the card has come down a little bit in my mind. I don't think it's as insane as it was when I first saw it, but it is very good. I'm going to give this card an S tier ranking, but I think it's a low S. I don't think it's as good as some of the S tier cards we've seen. Next up, our first seven cost card, Long Live the Fighters, a Fremen card, has access to Fremen and blue spots. If your deck has three or more cards, look at the top three cards, draw one, discard one, and trash one. And on reveal, it reveals for three daggers and two persuasion. So a lot of things going for this card. First of all, Fremen Axis, Blue Axis are going to be good. The Agent ability is very strong. It's the first mechanic we've seen like this in that it really lets you dig through your deck. It's really good deck management. And if you have other strong cards, it lets you cycle through and get them so much faster. If you have a card like this with some of the other strong cards we've seen, it lets you just play them over and over and over again. It's so good. I will say one of the downsides of this card, which can make it a little bit more awkward to play. Let's say you play this card and you only have two cards in your draw pile. You can't use this ability. So... If you run into scenarios where you don't have enough cards in your draw pile, you do have to figure out how to draw the remaining cards and then reshuffle your deck so you can use the ability. So the timing of that can be a little bit awkward, but even if you're not getting the ability off, revealing for two persuasion is really strong for getting spice and flows and stuff. And then I already talked about how strong getting three daggers is. So this card does a lot of great things. I think it's a really, really good card, but I don't know if it quite crosses into that S tier for me. Ah, Revealing for three daggers is incredibly strong and digging through your deck is also really strong. I think this is going to be another low S tier card, maybe high A. I don't think it's as broken as some of the other S tier cards is the only reason I'm saying that, but it is really good. I love going after this card when it's available and it's just a fun card too. Next up, Interstellar Trade, seven cost card. It lets you acquire a contract when you buy it. Spacing Guild has access to green, blue, and orange. When you play it, you get a free faction bump anywhere. And it has one persuasion for each completed contract you have. So this card is so freaking good. It's insane. I love this card. I did not fully appreciate the strength of this card when I first saw it, for sure. So first of all, we already talked about how hard it can be to get friendships, get alliances in this game. So anything that's going to give you a free faction bump is just going to be a good card for playing it. But in addition, it has the flexibility of this reveal ability, which is so good. Being able to get one persuasion for each completed contract you have, when you get this card, you want to start grabbing contracts and completing them as soon as you can. Even if you only have three, revealing for three persuasion is so good. But you can also get this up to four persuasion, five persuasion. And once you get into that territory, this enables you to get spice must flows so easily. Getting this card early, playing it a bunch to get the faction bumps, and then at the, once you hit the end of the game and you have a bunch of completed contracts, this, can, this, this card alone can get you multiple victory points. This card is insane. I think this is an S tier card for sure. I love buying it. It's really fun to play around. And uh, yeah, it's a good card. Next up, we have Overthrow. Our first eight cost card. When you buy it, you get an entry card. It has access to all of the faction spots. When you play it, you get two influence instead of one, which is going to be really good. It reveals for two persuasion, two daggers, and a troop. You really don't want to be revealing this card. You want to be playing it every time you see it. This card pretty much just gives you a victory point every time you play it. When you consider you need two influence to get a victory point or get to the alliance. This card is awesome, especially if you can get it early, especially if you can get it off multiple times during the game. This card can win you the game by itself. You just start taking all of your friendships. You start getting alliances. When you get this card in your deck, you definitely want to start thinning out your deck so you can see it over and over again. Oh, this card's so good. It is the most expensive card in the game with the other eight cost card we're about to talk about soon. But, oh, it's so good. Obviously an S tier card if you can get it. So definitely try to go after it when you can. And the last card we have to talk about, the eight cost Steersman. When you buy it, you get a Space and Guild bump. It has, It is a Space and Guild card. It goes to Space and Guild, green, blue, and orange. When you play it, you get to draw a card and you get to pull back one of your other agents. So this is the new Quizzet's Hatterick card in that when you play it, you're getting an extra agent action this turn, which is so incredibly good. And if you're unfortunate enough to have to reveal it, you get two Persuasion and two Spice. This is also a really good card. I don't know if it's quite as good as Overthrow. I do think it's really good. It does give you Space and Guild access, which I talked about. It's really strong access and it gives you half of a victory point just when you buy it. And having the flexibility of giving you an extra action is so strong. I love getting this card. I don't think it's quite as strong as some of the S tier cards we've seen for the cost. I think it's like a middle of the road S tier card. It is still very, very good. You want to go after it where you can, but I love getting this card. It's very fun to play with. And uh, yeah, you can do a lot of fun things with it.
Okay, that's my entire review of all of the cards in Uprising. Let me know in the comments if you disagree, if you think other cards to be stronger or less strong, what your experiences have been with some of these cards. Maybe I'm overlooking some of the strong aspects of some of these cards, but thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.